The end is near, Bruce Wayne. I thought I'd die an old man. That future is beyond you. Hey guys, so Lord here, back again with another review, and today we'll be taking a look at the McFarland Toys DC Multiverse Injustice 2, Dr. Fate, who is part of the second wave of Injustice 2 figures, brought to us by, of course, the fine folks over at McFarland Toys in their DC Multiverse line, as I said before. And this guy is packed with a white variant of the Flash called Hot Pursuit Flash. Which I think is kind of stupid, because for a video game with a lot of cool character designs, I'd rather get some new characters, but I guess they gotta save the budget where they can, right? Either way, this guy is light on accessories. This is a newly tooled figure. He comes with a trading card, collectible trading card. There's a picture on the front. On the back, there's a bio for Dr. Fate. I want to say his real name is Clark something. I knew it in the Mezco review, but I forgot it here. And we will be doing some comparisons to not only my Mezco Dr. Fate, but the other Injustice 2 figures I have. And he also comes with the flight stand with the clip on it. Uh, I am using the stand from Etrigan at the moment. Uh, I'll have him on the flight stand for the end of the video. But uh, he does not come with one of these. He just comes with the one stand. So, Dr. Fate. This is easily the best figure in this line so far, this Injustice 2 line. Albeit, I wish he did not have a stupid trigger finger hand. It's Dr. Fate, not Dr. Deadshot. I mean... He doesn't come with anything to hold, so it's it's just a useless trigger finger hand. And he's got these really skinny wrists. These wrists are really, really small. I'm not crazy about that, but um, whatever. He seems very skinny for a dude in armor. I think he would be a little thicker, maybe, but it's whatever. He's got a rubber cape, though. That's actually pretty soft, so you can't pose him up. Pretty good. This will not get in the way. And then he also has the uh, rubber torso overlay. So, you know, that's cool. But he can crunch forward really good with that. He can crunch back really far with that. So he's definitely got the torso articulation knocked out for this line. Oh, I pulled the... There we go. I pulled his little armor plate out there. You can rotate him at the waist. And he does get some tilt in there. His head is on a double ball peg. So he can look all around, kind of, sort of. It's hindered because he is wearing a helmet. But, you know, it's nothing too crazy. His shoulders go out. They are on that ball joint we're used to seeing in this line but it doesn't really do anything he's got a bicep swivel he's got double jointed elbows i will say the bicep swivel is kind of tight on this guy so watch out for that double jointed elbows are good very trenchy and gappy but that just seems to be the norm for this line um, he does have ball hinge wrists as well and you can literally do whatever you want with those. Nothing crazy. He's got forward and back in the hips. He's got a thigh quiver. It's a little bit more prevalent on this side, but it's not that big a deal. His legs are very difficult to spread out. His uh, little diaper situation makes it very difficult for him to do the splits. So that's whatever. Um, he's got double jointed knees, which he can literally almost kick himself in his own butt. Look at that. Knees are very gappy too, but again, we're used to that. And then he's got the ball hinge ankles. 
with the rotation and the toe joint. Kind of small feet. I don't know. I think he could have been a little bit bulkier, but I, I don't mind it. Still a worthy figure. I think he's awesome. So, there you go. That is Dr. Fate in a nutshell. Looks good. Uh, maybe could have been a little bulkier, but eh, it's nothing to really bugs me. So, with that being said, getting him stood back up there. Let's take a look at some comparisons. First up, here's our new Injustice 2 Dr. Fate. Next to the only other Dr. Fate figure I have that's relatively close to this scale, we got the Mezco 112th Collective Dr. Fate. Shout out to Mr. Stephen Bashotti from the My Wife's Gonna Kill Me podcast, Legion's Cast, and Podcasters of the Universe for the hookup on that one. Obviously, this McFarlane one is awesome in its own right, but it is no comparison to that super supremo Dr. Fate there. But he does scale nicely with the Demon Etrigan that I just took a look at recently. Even though they're not from the same source material, I think you can make it work. Up next here he is next to the only other figures in McFarlane Toys' Injustice 2 line. We got the Flash and Gorilla Gred. And I have to say this line is kind of the coup de grave odd proportions. Grad's too small, Dr. Fate's got really skinny wrists, and I guess there's nothing really wrong with the Flash, but I still think of the three, Dr. Fate is the most solid of what we got right now. And last, but certainly not least, we have our two regulars, the Mythic Legion's Brother Mandibulus and the Mortal Kombat 11 spawn. And Dr. Fate's little mohawk Puts him just slightly over Spawn's height, so sorry, buddy, you got knocked off the pedestal this time. But with that being said, time to wrap things up. Some final thoughts. Overall, and aside from the stupid trigger finger this guy has for whatever reason, this is another home run for the McFarland Toys DC Multiverse line. I love me some Dr. Fate as it is, but give me a really solid. Dr. Fate figure, based off a really cool design from the Injustice 2 video game, with a lot of nice textures and gold paint detail. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, I love this figure. So there you go. I think this is the best figure out of the Injustice 2 line. I hope we get more Injustice 2 figures from McFarlane in the near to distant future. I'd really like to see Deadshot and Swamp Thing in particular, but... I'm not picky. I'd even like some figures from the first Injustice game. I know not a lot of people like those designs, but there are a few that stick out to me and look really cool. So hopefully this opens the floodgates for more Vig game figures in the near distant future, as I said before. So with that being said, I would highly recommend you pick this guy up. I think he's awesome. There is a Chase variant with a brighter blue and maybe a brighter gold going on but i'm okay with this this is good enough for me so well, that being said hope you guys enjoyed this review don't forget to like this video hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know whenever i upload more reviews like this one got to show that algorithm moves boss right and as always don't forget to hit me up on instagram at overlord productions and leave a comment in the comment section below let me know what you think of this guy whether you want it love it or hate it I know the video game designs aren't for everybody, and people would like to see McFarlane do some more classic stuff. Me, personally, I like the different stuff because we got the classic stuff from Mattel, but a lot of that stuff's not cheap anymore. So, yeah, it wouldn't hurt, but I'm not going to be picky about it. But as always, keep the comments civil because the world sucks enough as it is. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later.